give you time versus some concentration or pressure or whatever. Um, you're going to be kind of compa- looking to see how they, um, mm. which, which the be- what, uh, what the best fit is for the integrated rate forms. Time versus concentration. Pressure in this case is similar. If pressure doubles, guess what concentration does? Double. Double. So whatever pressure is doing, it'll behave, you can treat it like concentration. I have pressure and time. I don't know what this one, first one is, but we do know the next one is 710. And then it goes down to 670 and 602 at 100, 200, 400 seconds. Um, if it was a first, if it was a zero order, when this drops down a bit, it should drop at the same amount for each similar time interval. Unfortunately, I gave you not similar time intervals, so you have to do a little bit of, kind of um, calculating. This drop right here is a drop of 40 units, right? Yep. This next time interval, instead of being 100 seconds, next goes 200 more seconds. So it should be twice as big a factor, and twice 40 should be 80. Did it go down by 80? Yeah. No, it went by 68. So it doesn't fit. So it doesn't, it's not going down by a nice, consistent zero order. So maybe it's first order. So we can take the natural log of P. Pressure. And then can someone do that and give me enough digits? So take the natural log of 710. 6.5. Six um, give me three digits at least past the decimal. Uh, 6 point what? 565. Five, five. Okay. The next one, log of natural log of 670. Uh, 6.501. And log of 602. 6.4. Okay. So oh, 6.507. 507? Yeah. Okay. So the first batch, when it dropped from here to here, this changed by um, 58. Is that right? 0.058. If that's correct, if that drop, 0.058 in 100 seconds, is following a linear pattern, which first order would do with respect to the log natural logs, then this should do twice that, if it's twice the time interval. Um, so twice that number is 0.116. Let me add that onto, he- onto here. Um, that would be, so this one right here. From 0.5, uh, 16. 16, yeah. which that is changed a bit from there. So there's a discrepancy between how much these last two are changing. That's what I intended. Last period when I tried these, we didn't get the third extra digit. We couldn't see the change. So first order, it seemed like it was fitting. Um, I intended second order. So, oh, so that's I'll hopefully make close it enough. Probably not close enough. Well, it may actually be close enough. Like you can probably argue that that's a good, a good enough fit. It turns out, zero order, I mean, second order rapidly drops down the concentration. But for the same time period, you know, if you look at a first order, it might go like this. And for that type of time range, that's a pretty close fit. You won't necessarily know the discrepancies. Out here, um, it will really taper off quite a bit, and then you'll notice bigger discrepancies if you take a larger time. Right? So I'll try to craft this on next week's test with a little bit better numbers. So the best fit would have been 1 over P, I think. I may be wrong, but I chose the numbers trying to make that a good fit. Um, so once you know what order it is, you can go to that integrated rate form. How do you find K? Eric? Um, plug in your initial value. Plug in any two sets of numbers. And then it's going to be 100. Yeah. So the time frame is 100. And here's the original concentration, here's the final concentration. You just plot those numbers in. Original concentration 710. 
final concentration in that batch is 670. That's 100 time units. There you go. Solve for K. Once you know K, then you can take any other set of data and make predictions from it and say, look at those two. Um, you can backtrack and find out if, um, if it ends at 602. We don't know what it started at 400 seconds earlier. And you just found your K, so you plop that number in. You can work to solve for the functional concentration. Did you come up with one? Um, did anybody solve for that? What the K? Yeah, no, what uh, the original concentration was. Oh, yeah. It's 755. 755, okay. What's K? Yeah, what did you get for the K? Sorry. My K was 8.4 times 10 to the negative 7. Negative 7? 8.4 times 10 to the negative 7. And I had actually designed this with 755 as the number, so that seems to work.